Craig. Hi, Tim. You okay? Yeah, Craig. You can hear and see me okay, can you? I can indeed. I can indeed. How are you today? You been okay? Um, yeah, not so bad. Thank you for changing the view so I can see everything. Yeah, no problem uh, at all. Yeah, great. I'm on. Brilliant. Cool. Well, yeah, good. yeah thanks for How coming on. Thanks for speaking to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very well, thanks. Not too bad. Weather's a little bit better today, so yeah, can't complain really. Yeah, where are you? Uh, I'm in uh, Berkshire. I'm near Reading. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played the Watermill oh, a few okay. years ago. Yeah. Do you know it in, um, I can't remember that little village is called now, but um, yeah, it's just outside Newbury. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great, lovely part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> lovely lovely um yeah so thanks for coming on thanks for uh speaking with me so i'm just going to ask you some questions about your career basically yeah so yeah just about your upbringing basically so your childhood yeah. where you was born where you grew up what, what that was like for you okay yeah i, I was uh born and raised in uh Bridgend, okay. uh south wales mm -hmm. uh, between cardiff and swansea um i grew up in a, a village called tondi Okay. I still feel the um, spiritual home. I mean, you probably can't detect too much of a Welsh accent at the moment, but uh, it, when I talk to Welsh people, or when I've had a couple of pints, it, it sneaks back. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah, no, it's great, um, a great upbringing and um, very happy upbringing. And yeah, I'm still still Welsh through and through. <laughs> and, um, you know, big, big, obviously, big rugby fan, but before the World Cup. Yeah. We'll play tomorrow, of course, the friendly. So with a lot of new caps, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> lovely, lovely. But yeah, so Bridget, I moved, and I moved to I moved to Kent uh, with my family when I was fourteen. Okay. Um, near Swanley, Dartford area. Uh, my dad was promoted in his work, so yeah. Uh, we moved to Kent when I was fourteen, so I talked like that for a while. I learned that sort of thing and just talked like <laughs> it. So um, so yeah, so um, I had a great and very 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 childhood. Cool. Yeah, very happy. Lovely, lovely. Um, what made you want to become an actor uh, and what kind of work was involved to get um, recognised in this role? Well, um, a friend of I, I hated drama when I was at school, first of all. Okay. Uh, I really hated it. I didn't want to get up and perform at all. Uh, but when I was about 14, my mate Will, who's now an actor um, mm -hmm. as well, said, oh, there's an amateur dramatics group nearby. Um, there's lots of girls there. So um, we thought, yeah, let's do that. And we went along, and it was great. We were the only sort of males under 70, I think. All the other blokes had fought in the war. Okay. Um, and so we ended up playing sort of all the romantic leads to these 30-year-old women when we were about 15 to 16. Okay. Um, so we had a whale of a time. It was, it was fantastic, yeah. And then I moved to a bigger uh, um, theatre company in okay. Eerith. Um, and then the girl I was going out with at the time, she was a student, she was studying law, and I was getting a lot of good press coverage. She said, let's do it, go for it. So I sold my flat and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I went to drama school, Lambda, when I was 28. Okay. For three years. I was in, uh, um, yeah, very poor when all my mates were just getting married and oh, having okay. nice holidays and buying big houses. And I was like eating beans on toast. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, it's um, yeah, and I enjoyed Lambda, and then um, I was very lucky because I think if you leave drama school and you're a bit older, people go, oh, who's he? Why haven't we seen him before? So I was about thirty when I came out. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, you get an agent, or I got an agent, and then um, sort of went from there. Really. Yeah, yeah. What was the first big role you got offered, and how did it feel getting the role? Um, I, the first thing I got, I, I did, ah, God, I, I won the. BBC Carlton Hobbs Award, which is a school for graduate, uh, uh, an award for graduating drama students. Um, okay. It's done by the BBC Radio Drama Company. Yeah, yeah. And the winners get a six month contract with the BBC Drama Company. So I got that and then I went straight into the World Shakespeare Company. Okay. So I had a really good start uh, into my career, which is really good because a lot of people struggle yeah. initially and um, it's very difficult, but I was very, very lucky and I got those two big jobs. Uh, quite early on in my career, so that sort of set me on my way, really. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so you've had the honour to be in several high-profile uh, films, including 100 Street and Doolittle. Um, what was it like working beside and Annalena Jolie, uh, Ibris Elba and Robert Downing Jr.? I didn't really talk to um, Angelina Jolie, even though she was in the scene. She was in a different part of the scene. Okay. Um, 
That just because I didn't really do much. I didn't do much in that either. That was quite early on. So mm-hmm. I had a little scene with Idris. So I had to rest him. He's a massive bloke. <laughs> I, really, I was a copper, and he was huge, and I couldn't move him. He was so big and strong. But yeah. Robert Downey Jr. on um, Do Little was fantastic because um, I played the whale in it, but I was also his uh, his Welsh voice consultant. So oh, I okay. spent a lot of time with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, in London and in uh, LA working with him and we got very um yeah we became mates and um yeah he's a wonderful guy he's just so kind gentle considerate empathetic chap he's just one of the nicest men i've ever met yeah uh, he's a really lovely lovely man yeah really glad to see a fantastic actor so that was just a wonderful experience mm-hmm. working with him yeah lovely um, yeah that was lovely that was lovely Okay, lovely. Um, you've also done so much TV over the years. Could you tell me a little bit more about your TV work, um, being on shows like Doctors, Silent Witness, The Bill, etc.? Well, I've done Doctors about six, seven times, I think. Um, <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, it's been quite steady, but mainly my, my career has been uh, theatre-based. Um, yeah, okay. Although since COVID, that's kind of got smaller, smaller yeah, at the moment. Yeah. I'm hoping that's going to change. Yeah, TV is great. Um, I'm currently in a thing on TV, on BBC at the moment, called Wolf. Okay. Uh, which is on BBC One. Um, that's a really great show. Mm-hmm. I really recommend that. Um, yeah, I've, I've done quite a few. I've, I did uh, Call the Midwife a few years ago. I had Anthrax in that. Yeah. I did um, a drama for Norwegian TV, one of the Nordic Noirs, called Mammon, which is quite funny because I played uh, an assassin, and he was called The Englishman. Okay. Uh, the character description said the Englishman is a Scot. <laughs> so I kind of had to explain to these Norwe- <laughs> these Norwe- lovely Norwegian people that there's a big difference. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, like a lot of people from abroad, they think England, Britain is England. Yeah. Uh, so I had to explain the differences between the four separate countries <laughs> within the UK to them. But yeah, I love working on TV when I can because it's so different from theatre. Yeah. Uh, pick you up. For one thing, which is good, mm-hmm. um, and they feed you, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I'd like to do more TV if I can. Cool, cool. Um, how did you get involvement in uh, Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama? Uh, how did that come about? Um, what was it feel? It what, what did it feel like when you got got offered that? Right, so um, I um, I went to a party, okay, and there was a guy at the party, John Dorney, who does a lot for Big Finish. Mm-hmm. He writes script as if you probably know is. And um, uh, I met him at a party. He said, oh, you won the Cotton Hobbs Award. And I said, yeah. He said, um, oh, we'll have to get you in for a Big Finish. Uh, and so eventually they called my agent. And I was in Destination Nerva, which is a Tom Baker story. Okay. And I played this Victorian zombie lord um, who was colonizing space. And he had... Well, I gave him this sort of camp voice, which was quite sort of like, mm-hmm. fame. And, and Tom, halfway through the, um, the recording, went, who's he sound like? Who's he sound like? And then during the recording, he went, he's, he sounds like effing Tom. <laughs> uh, John, sorry. John, John, yeah. <laughs> he, said, he sounds like in John. And um, so, obviously, we all laughed. And then I thought nothing about it. And then I was in New York, really doing a play. And I got a phone call from... Big Finish, the producers, and they said, would you like, we're thinking about recasting now, we feel a respectful enough period has, has, has passed mm-hmm. since uh, John Kirby passed away, and um, we're looking at a possible recast, um, would you be interested? And I was like, I was in New York, yeah, 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 great, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. back to New York, and go boating around New York, and then I got home, and then suddenly my agent rang and said, oh, so this Big Finish uh, Doctor Who thinks the Doctor. And so, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolutely terrifying. Because you can imagine the steps. Yeah. Um, the, the, the shoes you have to fill. And uh, luckily, they did something. Can you see? Oh, sorry, man. That's all right. Don't worry. I'm just coming in the eyes. Hang on. I'll, I'll start that again. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry about that. Can you see me all right? Yeah, I'm fine. That's Perfect. fine. Perfect. Uh, right. So I can start at the beginning of a sentence. Um, so, yeah, I got home. And uh, my agent said, okay, you're doing this. Oh, my God. And um, luckily, Big Finish took the very wise and respectful idea of me not playing the third Doctor initially, but me being a narrator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I would speak as 
as the third doctor when he when he spoke like almost like an audio book yeah and um luckily katie manning was, mm -hmm. was on board and richard franklin and they were just wonderful to me and they really encouraged me and helped me and i got through it and luckily the most of the fans who listened to big finish were were very responsive because i can imagine you know i, I can understand the trepidation beforehand yeah. um you know that it's recasting an yeah. iconic uh, performance um i can see how difficult that might be for a lot of people and but i've had a lot of support from the fans and you know i've eventually gained confidence and i've grown with the part i hope and yeah um as i say luckily i've had katie there a lot and she's so encouraging and she's so yeah. helpful and yeah she's wonderful. lovely She's lovely. Yeah, um, lovely. I was just going to ask you: Did you have to do a lot of research into John Pertwee, Third Doctor, for, for that role? Did you Did you have to listen to quite a lot of his stuff, or did you just go yeah, with I still, it? I, st I still do. I still listen to all his stuff. I mean, okay. I, I, we're recording another one soon, and so what I do for about a week beforehand, I just immerse myself in watching the videos and stuff like that, okay. and I look through the script and I look for various little. Um, pointers uh there's certain words that he would ping out you know yeah you know like 60 and uh <laughs> and, and, and you know and there's certain because he had this uh a sibilant s he had a slight speech impediment so so he sort of wrote rounded his mouth you know that <laughs> thing he did and so i look for things like that where i can ping a word based on his performances yeah and obviously i've found out a lot about john from katie and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh that's been helpful, but I, I look at the actor as opposed to the performance uh, <clears throat> when I'm trying to research him. So I look at when I'm looking at the video, I look at what the actor is doing, what uh, John Pertwee is doing, as opposed to his performance. I'm looking why he's doing lines in a certain way. Yeah. So that's I, I do that, and then for about a week before, yeah, I try to immerse myself into it, and then hopefully something comes out in the record. <laughs> Do you um, do you have to go to the studio to do your um, audio for Big Finish, or do you do that from home? Well, I have got a, a sort of studio set up at home, but I like to be in the, the studio with the other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I go to the one in Wadhurst, which is in is near Tunbridge Wells in Kent, yeah. usually, which is the one weirdly where Tom Baker goes. Okay. Uh, where I got I did, did Destination for uh, Nerva, but then sometimes we go to West London to do it as well. I think the one we're doing next week is uh or the week after is in west london so okay. um yeah cool. so it's, i live in hastings on the south coast oh okay okay so, uh, yeah i have to trade up to there <laughs> lovely lovely um so just moving away from doctor who uh, what would you say stands out the most to you and are proud of the most uh in your career or maybe the one you have most fun being part of it'd be movie tv theater or, or big finish very hard to say really um, you try to have fun all the time, but obviously it's not possible. Um, I mean, since COVID, I've really learned to appreciate working again. Mm -hmm. So I'm tend to having fun every job I do. But each has got their own elements. Like in theatre, you have a company, so you get to know a lot of people, and it's a live thing. So it's a it's a sort of visceral feeling between you and the audience. TV is different because there's the pressure of it and it's a different, dis you know, all these things are different disciplines. Um, being in the studio for the Third Doctor stuff is fantastic because we have such a laugh because I get, along with whether it's Sadie or, or Daisy or Katie yeah. and Nick Briggs, we get to sort of like um, uh, determine the culture of mm -hmm. the of the, um, of the recording. So we're very friendly and we make sure everyone has a good time. I mean, we take the work very seriously, but everyone feels at ease because we know people coming in if they've not done uh, a recording like this before can be quite nervous so we will make sure we we're not uh, they see us that we're silly we're just silly people just yeah like having fun you know cool. but we take the work really seriously and but we make sure people are happy when they're doing it so cool. in terms of pride what i've done um it's really hard to say you know there's quite a lot yeah um, i'm very proud of yeah. Uh, so I, it's very hard to pick one thing out, to be honest. It's I think right. I'm just glad to still be working. <laughs> that's fine. That's a, that's, a, that's a good answer anyway. Um, yeah. Could you tell me what you have lined up for the future and look forward to working on? Right, now you've got me. Uh, not a lot. Well, I've got the Doctor Who stuff mm -hmm. um, and some conventions. 
I'm waiting on a couple of TV things. Okay. Um, normally by this time I'd I'd have sort of some sort of theatre. Yeah. Uh, off in some way, but it's not been happening recently. So, you know, I'm staying afloat at the moment. Um, yeah, it's it's a waiting game at the moment. So I'm writing. Okay. Uh, yeah, just trying to stay creative, and uh, so I'm writing a radio script, funny enough. Okay. And, um, yeah, and I've got another project on as well, uh, which I can't say too much about yet. But that's all um, right. Yeah, but it's, it's wait. It's, I'm waiting. I'm 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 like ninety eight percent of actors are <laughs> not working, and the weather should be better. I mean, the weather's awful here. Oh, I know. It's, you know, it doesn't feel like summer. summer. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I should be down on the beach now, but you know. <laughs> Um, there we go. Cool. It makes sure the weather's bad. It's great because then you can stay in and, and write. You know, you, you're forced to do it. Yeah. But um, yeah. No, I'm always um, I always remain sort of positive, and something always comes up. Yeah. But it's just the life of an actor, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, do you have any hobbies you enjoy doing? Yeah, I'm a big reader. I love history. Um, I've got a gym. I was doing yoga until hot yoga until recently. Okay. Love sport. Football and rugby. Mm-hmm. I can't play it anymore, I'm a bit too old, but, you know, I'm all watching. Um, yeah, um, I was playing racquetball for a while, not doing that much. But, yeah, a lot of um, interesting history and stuff. And I should really get another – I mean, I've never been a stamp collector or anything like that, but – Yeah. Or a train spotter. Um, I'd like to find another hobby. I'm going to try and learn the guitar. Okay. Outside. Yeah, but I've had – I bought a left – I'm left-handed. I bought a left-handed guitar about a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. And it's – still in the case yeah yeah so i bought i bought guitar during lockdown um and i played it for about a couple of months during lockdown and it, it's the same it's in the cupboard just sat there yeah. and I, every time i open yeah. it i think I, I need to play that um but yeah just just get the time to get it out and do it <laughs> i know i know well it's just i've I managed to tune it but now obviously it's out of tune but that's all i've done i can't i'm left-handed it's <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, my brain won't work like that. But I need to do it, because I used to play piano when I was a kid, but I was so, you know, I was in such a rush to give that up when I had the opportunity, when my, yeah. my mum and dad said, when you're 16, then you can decide. Of course, I'm 16, that's it, I'm not doing it anymore. I wish I'd kept it up. Yeah. But um, I'm going to try and learn that guitar at some point. Yeah, you know? it'd be nice. It's definitely be guitar nice. ain't cheap. <laughs> um, you said football as well, do you, do you support a team? Yeah, I'm a Liverpool sport. Okay. Um, I mean, like, so I remember the very late 70s, early 80s Liverpool team. So I was a glory hunter, you know. So okay. Probably a lot of people that support in Man City. but So I've always um, had a fondness for the Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I followed Cardiff for a while as well. Um, obviously, it's my local side. My first game was Cardiff v Cambridge. Oh, okay. 1979, I think it was, or 1980. Yeah. I was very young. Very young. And... Um, yeah, but I, I, I don't. I've fallen out of love with football a bit. I mean, I watch the World Cups and the Euros, but yeah, I don't know. It's changed. Football's changed, you know. Yeah, it has it's changed quite a game. bit. Yeah, it's a different game now. It's all about money and. It is indeed. Yeah, I, I I think Liverpool will have a good season this year. I'm a, I'm an Arsenal supporter, so. Oh yeah. All oh, right. Mm. Oh, well, I think you know good buys you've had. So you know, mm. I think Declan Rice might. Um, yeah. Might I'm, do something, I think. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I'm going up Sunday. I'm going to the Community Shield with my son. So oh, hope, hopefully we'll get a win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah. Have you had any friendlies yet? Have you played any friendlies yet? Uh, we played a friendly yesterday, uh, just the Emirates Cup at um, Emirates. Um, yeah. But I think that, that was 1-1, one, one, and I think they won on penalties. But yeah, okay. that's the only the friendly in this country. I think there was in America doing some friendlies there as well. Oh, yes, they were, weren't they? That's mm. right. With Man United. Cool. Um, right. yeah. So just one final question then. Um, what advice would you give for anyone that wants to become an actor or is maybe struggling to progress in that career path? Hmm. It's a hard one because giving advice, you know, if you don't feel entitled to give advice, is difficult. I'd say... It's a long game. Mm -hmm. It's a marathon, not a sprint. If you really want it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, It'll give you up. You don't give it up. Um, If you want to be an actor, I would would suggest drama school because it gives you the grounding. Okay. And it helps you get an agent. Um, I know people say, well, I can't afford drama school, but I couldn't afford drama school. And a lot of people I know from my sort of background, I couldn't afford it. And we just went heavily into debt for a few years. I mean, you know, 
it's the yeah. investment, I think. Mm, yeah. But I, I, it's not ideal, I know, and it shouldn't. That shouldn't be the case. But I think you just got to keep, just keep going. Do what you can. Just um, if you're just trying to start out, get some stuff to for a show you. So go on. I think there's a couple of sites you can go on. There's Mandy.com and there's other sites. Okay. Just try and get into short films, even if it's not paid. Just get stuff on the show reel so you've got something to show people. Or yeah, get yeah. into fringe stuff. Do things with your mates, um, you know, fellow actors. Try and work together, collaborate together. And um, yeah, you just got to keep. You just got to keep going. And it is very, very hard to start with. It's yeah. very hard unless you're very, very lucky. And talent is only a tiny bit of it. Talent is. Don't get, um, you know, dismayed if you don't make it. Or anything like that. Yeah. You know, most yeah. actors don't. What the people call make it, make it is being famous. If you go into acting for fame, you're in the wrong profession. Yeah. You know, fame is just a byproduct of something you've been in. Yeah, I've heard um, a lot of people say that. Nothing. Yeah, it's nothing to do with with talent. Is only a tiny bit of it. You've got to you've got to network. You've got to, um, you've got to look good. You know, as best as you can, presentable. Yeah. You just gotta be yourself, try and be yourself. It's so it's it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult, very difficult. But if you want it enough, then you can do it, you know. Yeah. You just gotta keep keep positive and keep keep your pecker up, as they say. Cool, cool. Thanks for the advice. That's great advice. Um yeah, so yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for speaking to me and telling me about your career. It's been it's been Excuse absolutely me. awesome. Great. Cool. All Cheers, right. Greg. Well, yeah, All thanks for coming on and I will uh, I'll speak to you soon. Definitely. All the best, Greg. That's yeah. on me. Cheers, bye bye. Bye bye.